All right, so this is the video for Wednesday, February 3rd, another two hour delay. Um, I'll make this quick. I did not go over the syllabus yesterday because of the two hour delay. So I'm, I'm kind of truncating these classes. I started class today on a little bit about myself. I didn't do that at all yesterday. And so I'll do that in this video in case you missed class. Um, so this is my ninth year at Monticello. I was here last year, but I was on leave. I never really left. I had a baby girl last June and I just took the year to be with my young kids and I'm back. So you might have seen me, but it might have been a while. I was um, teaching AP Lit the year before that and 12th grade. That's typically what I teach AP Lit in 12th grade. And then I've lately been begging for 11th grade because I love American studies. So um, this is a bit about me. I grew up in St. Louis. I moved here for undergrad at UVA. I um, was just seeking to leave Missouri. I loved the concept of going to a coast. So I was stuck between UVA or Reed College, if that tells you anything about me, um, and opted for UVA because it was like significantly cheaper as a public school. Anyway, um, I planned to move back to St. Louis, but Charlottesville has a way of holding you, and it's done that. I've moved away a few times, but I always come back, and I'm here to stay now. My husband and I have made this our home. I met him in education school, but before I went to ed school, I took a, a few years, about four years, to work a variety of jobs. I worked in finance. I worked in consulting. I worked in a variety of odd jobs. Um, I've had dozens of different jobs and a couple of attempts at a career. But what happened every time I tried something is teaching called me back. I just love being people. I love this job so much. And um, I knew that deep down, but I think I was running away from it because my whole family is teachers. So I'm going to talk about that for a second. My mom is an elementary principal. My dad's a high school math teacher. My brother Mickey is a high school PE teacher. My brother Kyle is a college professor currently at UFR and my sisters are elementary teachers so it's like in my blood and do you know how you feel like everyone's telling you to do something you want to do the opposite so i did that but um i found my way home and like i said i met my husband in ed school he also teaches he teaches at charlottesville high school he teaches history and we have two little kids i'll show you our kids here they are adam is three and a half and casey is one and a half so i We'll talk about them a lot and you'll hear them and they're such a part of my life that i can't really disentangle my life as a teacher my life as a parent so um then we looked back that was my bit about myself uh today and we thought about yesterday it's so odd to start with grammar but i really want to start our systems and i'm going to spend some time today talking about the syllabus and systems mondays or in yesterday's case tuesdays are grammar and craft day Everyone understood the concept I'm going for, and I love that. I, I want to set us free today with creative analysis, but I wanted to make sure we started with just simple craft. I have a couple of sentences that I thought were really nice. I made comments on everybody's. The first sentence here, Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb, Enchanted a Nation Seeking Hope. There's my son. Because the current sociopolitical climate of the United States, specifically over the past year, has been incredibly volatile, leaving the nation poised to revere a poem like Gorman's. Love how that student built in a few phrases after mine to create a sense of depth. Similarly here, Gorman's poem, The Hill That We Climb, enchanted a nation seeking hope, but in some ways her words rang hollow as the former president was not present at the inauguration, highlighting the division we face. Nice turn there, a nice turn back against the stem, which of course is available to you. You can tear apart the stem. So that was grammar and craft. And in that context, we went through the syllabus in more detail because why grammar and craft? Why anything? Okay, it's a really long syllabus. It's like a labor of love. I encourage you to read it, skim it, you know, while you're watching TV or something. It is too long for me to read in class, but I went over the highlights. So I paused at each section and I explained a sentence or two. And I'm gonna do that now, but a little bit more speedily. So if you miss something in the video, you'll have to ask. I start with grading because it's odd. I am choosing to use a system that is based on goal metrics instead of my objective metrics. So what that means is next week, Tuesday, you will begin setting goals for your course. And you'll look at the course goals 
and see that they align with yours. It has to be somehow related to the course goals. You'll choose three major goals. There's an option to create a fourth personal wellness goal, but it's not related to the grade. We will have three conferences throughout the year, throughout the semester, where you will explain to me how your progression is towards your goal and you'll propose a grade. And that will be the grade that goes in the grade book. That will be 85% of your grade. Most of your grade in this class is determined by your achievement of the goals that you set out. When we meet for those conferences, you'll present your goal tracking document, which I'll introduce next week. And that will be where you reflect on how you're doing towards your goal. We'll look a lot more into what this means because it is a new system for you, I imagine. 15% of the grade then is an objective measure of the timed essay test metrics. I chose that because no matter what you go on to do, on-demand writing, timed writing is a big part of the collegiate experience. And even in professional worlds, um, I do timed writing all day long. Every email I send is basically timed, especially when I have to write a longer one. It has to be good the first time, and that's what we'll focus on. We'll do four timed writes in this class. You can drop the lowest grade. Our first timed write is this Thursday, and so it starts fast. This is more of a diagnostic to see where you are in the world of timed writes. All right, so that's grading. Uh, content, there is a teacher version of the syllabus if you want to see how I break down the skills in more detail, but these are the skills of the class as dictated by the College Board. We are meant to study character, setting, structure, narration, figurative language, which is largely poetry, and literary argumentation, and indeed we will. Those are the goals that you will develop, you'll develop your goals rather around those skills. Um, I say here specific content domains, it is worth saying about 50% of the curriculum is poetry. That's the way it's designed. Uh, homework. Um, homework is reading always. I will not ask you to do a writing piece except for your two literary arguments. That will be when you have to do some work outside of class. As long as you're using async time, which is usually about five to 10 minutes of writing, you will not have homework outside of our scheduled class hours. There is enough time in that 45 minutes to read and write. So I will give it to you every day, promise. Um, the reading, I really want you to be able to do it physically without a computer screen. So that's why I sent home packets, which hopefully you've received. It's why I'll ask you to go pick up your books for the class from Monticello. We start our novel unit on March 1st. So get it before then. And I encourage you to go someplace and read away from a screen when it's time to read. There is a lot of reading, so that is really your homework. Da, 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 da. Student participation, I'll never call on you. I will ask you to participate in Nearpods where you have to uh, type out an answer though. That will be one way I can track your thinking. And then if we're in a one-to-one -one conference, I'd ask for you to be able to speak back with me, even the, uh, via the chat. If you choose collaborative work skills as a goal, that's when you will be doing a lot more speaking in a group. Or if you choose public speaking as a goal, then I'll expect that you're speaking in the large group. So it's kind of what you've identified in terms of your out loud participation. All right, so um, then I break down the writing, which is really also just like the course structure. Mondays are for grammar, Tuesdays are for creative analysis, Wednesdays are writing for organization. It's like thesis statement, analysis paragraphs, and Thursdays are writing for reflection because that's when you're gonna be doing your um, goal tracking every week. And that is the shape of daily class, but you can see more details about that in this section here. Um, texts are in your packet. It is really old fashioned this year. I am so used to doing student choice, allowing for book clubs to emerge. I don't think this is the environment for that. I've chosen everything. I'm going to deliver a lot of basically lectures about the content that I've chosen. I have so many opportunities built in for you to affirm your voice but it will be with the texts I've selected simply because of the constraints of our online world. Uh, late work is fine. I will say though that I design everything in a really specific way that builds on each other. So it's best to do things in the order in which they've been assigned. Um, High School Honor Council, this is just me reminding you that we have an honor system that will help you towards your goals. Your goals will have no meaning if you're getting too much support towards them. We'll use turnitin.com for your two literary arguments that are due. Contact me whenever you want. 
then here's like the nice um, little prize at the end. If, if this excites you, it did for me when I was a student. This is a list of every single week what we're doing in class that week. So you can get a, you can get ahead, you can catch up. It's all there for you. It even has the due dates of when I'd like you to read everything by. So I've tried to make it really collegiate in that way. All right, that's our syllabus. The uh, last thing we do today, this is a separate video you'll have to click on to see my direct instruction on it. The course goals, as I've sort of stated, are here, and I'm gonna spend some time on number two today. Yesterday was one. What we're looking for today is a little bit of discussion about the story of an hour. And to do that, I'm using a Nearpod in class. You don't need to do that if you're watching the video. You just have to focus on your BGD. Your specific goal, oops, sorry, is to identify what textual details reveal about a character, their perspective, and I should say, or their motives. So you're gonna be writing about three to four sentences with regards to Mrs. Mallard or Mr. Mallard, if you like, or one of the other characters. There's not many in the story of an hour. So I asked your classmates to think about that, and then I generated my own think aloud, and you can see that video attached to this. Um, today, your agenda item at the end here is pull a quote from the story of an hour and write about character in three to four sentences of creative analysis. Casual tone, not great for grammar. Just want to hear your thinking. If you want my model, again, go check out that other video. And that is Wednesday.